Hello everyone. Today I am in, I am in a conversation with Madam Tumunga Rebanukmer. She is a clinical psychologist and founder of the Gladroom Clinic in Kohima. She is among the pioneer, pioneering psychologists in London. So thank you so much, Madam, for giving us your time and accepting our invitation for this interview. Despite your busy schedule, I'm very happy that you can make it up to this. So without any further ado, let's go with our interview. So let me ask the first question. As a woman opting for a career path, which was less explored and taken up in our society, can you enlighten us on few challenges and obstacles which cross the journey? Um, the biggest challenge for me uh, was having no sense of supervision be it in the form of a senior or a peer um it was definitely a lonely profession i always say that most times i feel like I'm, i was groping in the dark and with the myriad of cases that came to me uh fresh out of training with um zero experience i most times had to you know figure things out on my own i had no one i could ask questions to and that was quite um unsettling for me that was very challenging yeah um i always felt that I need to have a solution or I was I, I always need to help them in whatever way that I can and so, so that weighed heavy on me the other was a lack of structure at the hospital with regard to uh, my field of work so to start from scratch with zero experience was a steep learning curve so there were people in the hospital looking up to me saying that okay she's a new psychologist now you know clinical psychologist um, I'm sure she'll know how to go about but for me it was it was so new and I felt so incompetent. I felt like, you know, oh my gosh, can I ever do well? And all that came in. So there was a huge challenge as well. Um, for someone who is also <clears throat> vertically very challenged, so I'm a little small in, in stature. So that aspect was also another obstacle, if I may add. Um, I will have the patient or the, or the caregiver walk in assuming that I'm a student. Um, thankfully, not everyone did. Uh, this also interfered with the treatment process, and it definitely took longer for me to be able to build rapport with the client or with the patient, which uh, for clinical work is a foundation. So those were the few challenges that I can mention. Thank you so much. Of course, there are many challenges being a psychologist and being a very new subject matter for many of the people here. So I'm glad to hear that. So next question I would like to ask is, as one of the first women clinical psychologists, especially in our state, and having a private clinic, can you share a few things about people's perception about the profession? Okay. Uh, psychology as a subject in Nagaland started from the uh, started for the higher secondary level only in the year 2015-16, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so although, yes, bits of it um, has been studied under the discipline of education uh, as a separate subject, it is a relatively new field for us. So for many, it was a lack of being informed and just the not knowing. Also, mental health um, issues is always understood in the extreme, right? So which has predisposed many to see anything with regard to um, mental as highly negative. It's funny how sometimes some people's perception make me feel like I'm like a walking x-ray machine. Um, it's common for people to tell me things like, oh, we need to be careful when Atem is around because uh, I'm sure, you know, she can read our minds or, or laugh and say, uh, be careful, you will become one of them eventually. Or whenever people I know used to see me riding to or back from work on the staff van that had mental hospital written on it, it will always draw out some laughter. So of course, one need not be offended of such things because as I said, many times it springs out from not being well informed about this field, but it's also worth pondering on why is it that we find such things funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, I would also like to add that not only being a professional, but even for me being as a student, we still get those kinds of like, you're studying psychology, so we need to be careful around you and stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, yeah. true <laughs> so going to the next question the societal judgment stereotypes and cultural values play a role in women's mental health the answer to that is uh, a definite yes speaking in the context of nanglan uh, i think we ask this question to the women the answer would be a resounding yes <laughs> however the fact that mental health itself is poorly understood the reality is that many do not even recognize the pressures and expectations that they live under so going about the daily affairs at the great cost of their mental health uh, in a patriarchal society like ours, uh, women have been conditioned to bear the weight of the many expectations from their role as, a, as, as daughters, sisters, wives or mothers, uncomplainingly in silence. So many choose to go uh, robotically, go through the motions of life. They choose to go through robotically the motions of life. Uh, they stoically, you know, um, care for the family. And for those working, reporting to work, pretending everything is okay. So yes. Wonderfully said. Okay, going, uh, this question is a bit, uh, how to say, let's go back in time. So during the inauguration of your clinic, Cloudsville, in the year 2013, you have stated, I've always wanted to, open the clinic, but, but was scared to take a leap of faith. So what exactly was the fear you have mentioned here? Wow, that's like um, eight years back when I yeah, opened up. Exactly. <laughs> so it's crazy how fast time flies. Uh, there were many things that, uh, that made me want to start the cloud room. Say I felt I had a responsibility to correct the resistance or stigma towards anything to do with mental health and just a general apathy towards seeking help and intervention yeah so as with anyone um, pursuing their passion something that also weighed heavily on my heart was a question of uncertainty like i mentioned of whether i would be able to sustain the space would people come to seek help would people even take me seriously so after all my years of studying, my parents' investment in my education, my fear was if I was uh, making the right decision. However, uh, despite all the doubts, I knew for a fact that there was a desperate need um, for creating more accessibility to mental health care. And here was a small door of opportunity for me to respond to that need. By then, I had been working at the State Mental Health Institute as a visiting consultant. It was the third year for me. So um, it was simply known as the mental hospital back then. So you can imagine how uninviting the name itself was. So I saw that people uh, seek treatment uh, as a last resort. So I wanted cloud room to be accessible, I wanted it to be a non-threatening or warm space, things that can be found lacking in hospitals and institutions. So that was what it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad to hear about it and your journey with Cloudroom. Thank you. So going to the next question, what do you think is the scope of psychology here in Northland? What can be the main challenges faced by the people opting to become a psychologist? Um, I would first like to say that <clears throat> there is a wide scope of psychology with, uh, with regard to all walks of life, uh, ranging from mental well-being, you know, personal and professional development, uh, medical science, nursing, family and relationships and beyond. So psychology is a wide field. I'm one part of the field that is clinical psychology and I can speak from that. So I would like to be optimistic and say that the scope is promising. So in recent years, it's so encour encouraging to see various stakeholders recognizing the need. So for instance, uh, churches taking in this um, aspect as a very integral part of uh, you know, um, doing life. For example, the school, the educational system. So there, if you look at, at it that way, there's a lot of job opportunity prospect later on, you know, be it uh, teaching the subject or bring a counselor in the school or even with the with the juvenile centers prison just a lot of a lot of um, uh, avenues so um, psychology is a multidisciplinary um, 
thing in nature, right? So in order to bring about holistic change, for example, in clinical psychology, we need to work alongside psychiatrists, uh, neurologists, or special educators, speech therapists, occupational therapists, to name a few, right? So it is multidisciplinary in nature, and that we need to be aware of. And the challenges for a student can be, you know, because getting to a college can be difficult in Ireland because there are not many colleges that provide psychology. Uh, you know, like we mentioned, because it's uh, a new subject in itself here. And also it, it can come with fighting certain barriers. So it can be fighting the external barrier. External barrier would be, you know, the lack of job creation, you know, uh, the, the lack of awareness for which, you know, many people don't offer the subject. And the internal barrier can be coming from oneself. It can be parents saying that, you know, I mean, there's, you know, why do this? And so it can also hamper into the decision making. So I feel that, you know, um, those can be the challenges that students might face in terms of sustainability as well. Yeah. Okay. As you say, there's not much colleges that offer psychology as the major subject. So uh, there are only a few here in, uh, in Auckland. First, and then that psychology is also uh, they started psychology as a subject. I mean, giving on this uh, subject only last year. So I'm also more one of the first stage of the psychology department. Yeah. Wow, well, um, there's a wonderful <laughs> opportunity for me to yeah. grab the opportunity and study psychology as my major subject. And so, next question is. Is education and obtaining various training important in the field of psychology or experience? Yes, absolutely. Like all fields, um, psychology is also ever changing. So as with any other profession, um, the need to stay updated with new research and new knowledge is so important. I really feel that sometimes and most times familiarity blinds us. And so when we get very familiar with something, we just get blinded by a lot of aspects of it. When, but when we allow ourselves to have ongoing training and learning, it just open up ourselves to so much more possibilities out there. So yes, I would say that's absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So next question is, what are the possible avenues for women and the youth with reference to females as a professional psychologist? Okay. Um, um, the field of psychology is increasingly becoming a woman dominated field. So like I said, remember, like in my masters, there were three men out of the 90 females there. So research site that, you know, um, this possibility is because psychology is more like a life oriented field. So women may be more drawn towards that. The other aspect is, you know, uh, men traditionally being the main breadwinners of the family may not see psychology as a very viable, sustainable profession, especially when you're looking at a profession in Nagaland as well, since it's just starting off when we speak about financial sustainability as well, since there's no creation of post, it can get quite, you know, challenging. So these are the aspects that might, you know, um, make it a little bit more for the other gender to be part of this profession. But while um, I really feel that in the field of psychology, while women are doing well in this field or any other field for that matter um, is a cause of celebration my personal view is that um, the lack of diversity always has a downside uh, because men and women have the ca uh, capabilities to bring diverse insights to the table even in the practice of psychology both men and women are needed so as much as women are more inclined towards it, I would encourage more men to also join this because there are men also who need counseling. And most times in my experience, I've also seen that, you know, men are a little bit more uncomfortable to come and speak to a woman. And so, yeah, it'd be good to have like, you know, both the genders working and actively in this field. Yeah. Thank you I so much. That answers your question, yeah. <laughs> okay, so next question is, what are some of the few drawbacks of practicing in our state? Uh, in response to the earlier question on the scope of psychology, I had uh, mentioned the various possible job opportunities that this field can provide. Uh, however, in the current um, scenario, to put it positively, our state is still in the process of getting there. So at the moment, uh, one challenge of practicing is that job opportunities to practice are still in the process of being created 
Uh, besides that, I would say that the whole stigma around anything to do with mental health can be a detriment. After all, we can only practice if there are people who are open and vulnerable enough to seek help. Thank you. So next question is, can you mention a few changes you see compared to the initial beginning of a clinic and people approach today? Um, I'm so glad to say that there has been a big difference uh, in the scenario a few years ago and the scenario today. So for instance, even just a few years back, the clients I would meet were mostly ones who had been referred to me by schools or sent by psychiatrists. But today I have people who have will, willfully chosen to seek help, uh, say people who are struggling to cope with work stress or young people who are facing the challenges of transitioning from city life back to being home to their parents' homes, etc. you know? Uh, so people's attitudes are changing. And that's such a positive thing that I would want to highlight. Of course, uh, there's still a long way to go, but um, these are all good changes. I'm so glad to hear about how people from uh, different people that, can, that come to your clinic for counseling to be a better self. So next question would be the last question. So uh, the question is, would you like to suggest a few recommendations or advice to the upcoming psychologist? I still feel I have a long way to go to come to the point of giving advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but from my own experience, uh, I would say that if you are a student of psychology, um, interested in practicing clinical work like I am, at least get an MPhil degree done, uh, because without which uh, you cannot practice as a licensed psychologist, right? Uh, so for me, I would like to encourage that because we're just a handful of us here in Nagaland at the moment who have done the MPhil and practicing as a clinical psychologist. So we would we need more people on board. And you know, if you're interested in clinical work, then I advise you, you know, to get your MPhil degree done. Besides that, uh, practicing as a clinical psychologist, being a relatively new field in our state, has been like I've been saying that over and over again. Um, the journey may have a lot of challenges personal, familial, societal. But if we are truly passionate about the call, we have to stay committed. So persistence is key and the willingness to be vulnerable as ourselves and take that risk. So there are some days when I feel, um, when I still do face moments or days of self-doubt, uh, questioning whether if I'm making any difference at all, if I'm being of any help, Sometimes I feel so helpless listening to the kinds of stories that my clients tell me, making me feel so ill-equipped. But then uh, what keeps me going is that I tell myself that I don't have necessarily have to give them all the answers to their questions or the solution to their problems. Maybe at that moment, the help I give maybe something seemingly uh, inconsequential as just quietly offering a listening ear. So I remind myself to be intentional. I remind myself to be responsible to the call and to be faithful and to continue honing my skills and to continue learning as I, as I continue my practice. Thank you so much for the advices. I hope people, viewers listening to our podcast conversation will be very much pleased by your advices. So with that, we can wrap up this interview. So thank you so much again for giving us a precious time. If you have anything to add, you can. Oh, I know. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I think it's just, um, I feel very excited when I uh, sit down with future psychologists in the making, you know, doing psychology. I always get excited because like I said, um, I was relatively a loner when it, come, mm -hmm. when it came to this profession. But now that there are a lot of people joining and there are a lot of people taking interest and being passionate about this, I'm very excited. I'm so glad that Tetsu College has this subject that they're uh, providing. And so I really hope that in the coming years with all your participation, you know, that uh, we do see 
mental health issues being addressed in a totally different light. And so, um, you know, I would encourage anyone who's interested to take this up and we just hope to see this grow. We hope that we will normalize mental health issues, talk about it more amongst ourselves because that's where the stigma starts and that's where the stigma can end. So it starts with us. So yeah, I would like to say that. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. It was such an insightful session. I hope we can meet in some day, meet in person and have more of uh, such discussions. I would love that, yeah. <laughs> and then maybe in the near future, again, we may call you, we may give you a call for such interviews again. Uh, thank okay. you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.